Hello, guys, and uh, welcome to the show. Listen, uh, this springtime, it's uh, Saturday, and uh, it's a beautiful spring day, May 19th. Uh, spring's a little bit late coming here in Canada. Uh, I think it's something to do with uh, global cooling. <laughs> Forget about global warming. Global warming's a bunch of baloney. Uh, if anything, right now we're going through some sort of a solar cycle that's creating a cooling effect. Uh, terrible cooling, and it's. Uh, I think it may be affecting the volcanoes or whatever. Something's going on in the earth. Uh, because we're having a string of volcanoes are going off, the first one and then another, and Yellowstone is becoming more active. The ground is going up. we got to really keep an eye on that. i got a site I go to called Mary Greeley. Uh, she is fascinated with Yellowstone, and she really knows her business with that. I don't know if she's a volcanologist or not, but I'm going to tell you what. You get a person that fervently is interested in a subject and studies it, I mean, really sits down and studies it. They don't have to have a degree. Uh, they don't have to have a PhD or anything like that. They don't have to be uh, have the, the sheepskin that they're a volcanologist or whatever. Sometimes they know more than the expert because they have a fascination in the subject and they study it endlessly and they learn more because they really want to learn. Whereas some of these experts, they just sit in class, you know, and they – they, they're, they're not really interested, and they, they just goof off the whole time they're in school. And they get out of school, and sure, they got the paper saying, hey, you know what, you're an expert. The paper says, oh, you're an expert. But that doesn't really mean they're an expert in the subject. Now, uh, this Mary Greeley, she may or may not have a, a certification as a volcanologist, but she probably knows as much as a lot of these volcanologists know, maybe more than some of them, uh, even if she isn't. Uh, so at any rate, because she's fascinated in, in, the, in these volcanoes, she's right in there, and she's on top of the story. If anything's going on in Yellowstone, she'll know it. So I, I use her as my go-to place to see what's happening with Yellowstone. If something's happening with Yellowstone, she is my signal. Uh, the miners in the coal mines used to use a canary uh, to signal them. If, if there was gas in the mine, because canaries are very sensitive to gas, and they would die quicker than uh, uh, she's my canary in the coal mine, <laughs> so to speak. So anyway, fellas, it's springtime, and I'm going to do spring cleaning. Uh, probably be back on again on Wednesday or Thursday, because I got a lot of work I'm doing uh, around the house, spring cleaning, uh, sweeping floors and stuff like that. Oh, my gosh, that's an awful mess. Uh, <laughs> over the winter, you know, and uh, I got to clean up the mess, you know, and, and get things straightened around. It's that time of year. It's spring, you know. You got to try to clean the car out a little bit. It's all full of old hamburger bags and stuff, you know, uh, from Wendy's and stuff like that. You got <clears> to <throat> get the garbage bag and go out there and clean them up. It's going to be a bit of work, but uh, I'm going to take a couple days break, uh, too, because it's springtime and go around and see the country and see some sights and stuff. Uh, you guys are great. You're a great audience. A fella could not have a better audience than I got. You know what I mean? And uh, I really enjoy doing these programs for you guys. Uh, I'm going to keep my eye on top of the financial situation uh, while I'm gone. I'm going to keep my eye on top of the news. And listen, I will be back in here. If there's a big breakthrough or some sort of big story breaks, you can bet I'll be on here and probably quicker than the other guys with it for you uh, until Wednesday. But if nothing's going on, if everything's staying kind of smooth and smooth sailing, why, then uh, you'll probably see me on Wednesday or Thursday. Thank you guys for listening to my show. Uh, what I want to talk about uh, a little bit is, uh, is the bond market. Just real quick before I head off on this episode, uh, you know, the bond market is really starting to shake things up, and it's not going to go back down, not unless the Fed stops their quantitative tightening program, which is, which they're not planning on doing that because they think that the economy is steaming along. They had a plan, you know. I'll tell you what the plan is. Uh, this tax thing, they knew that this was coming, and uh, this, this tax thing, uh, this... Uh, Corporate buybacks and stuff like that. Uh, just a second here. Uh, what we uh, what we're looking at is uh, tax reforms and stuff like that. They knew that this was going to come along and help offset the uh, bond purchases. 
And in fact, they also knew that uh, as the bond yields rise, that new bond investors are going to come into the marketplace. And they're figuring to themselves, hey, you know what? As long as we don't get too big of a shock in the stock market, we can get away with this. They really think that they can get away with it. And uh, at this point, there hasn't been too big of a shock in the stock market. Plus, they've been able to control the stock market somewhat through things like the Exchange Stabilization Fund. And so they think they're ready to roll right now at this point. They think we're ready to roll on this project. We're ready to keep it going all the way up to $50 billion a month, and we're getting away with it. They figure the stock market hasn't rolled over too far. Uh, the economy is looking fairly strong still. Everything's looking good, and it's full steam ahead as far as the Fed's concerned right now at this point. And they're going to keep raising interest rates. You watch. They're going to raise probably two more times this year, and they're going to keep uh, this quantitative tightening program going. Uh, when the system breaks, it's going to break very quick. It's going to snap. And it's going to generate a lot of fear, and the Fed is going to turn the, turn the whole thing around. Uh, I'm expecting that probably now sometime this fall, after they go to $50 billion, uh, and it, they might get away with $50 billion for a month or two. Uh, but the whole system is going to break. And that's when the dollar is going to start to really die then, is after the Fed comes in and stops their quantitative tightening program. They're going to have to stop it. They're not going to be able to continue with it. Uh, they cannot continue for more than, uh, I don't know. Once they hit $50 billion, they're not going to get very far then at that point. Uh, this is like running a gauntlet. Uh, the Indians used to run through something that was called a gauntlet, and the other Indians would stand on either side and throw spears and, and uh, throw, uh, uh, th throw hatchets at them and stuff like that. And they'd have to run through there. Uh, without getting killed, and uh, they might get wounded running through, but uh, generally they uh, they had to make it through, and this is what the Fed's doing. They're running through this gauntlet. They fear they feel like they have to make it through to the other side, and honest to gosh, uh, they're getting they're going to get hit. They're eating a the clunk right in the head halfway through the gauntlet. Uh, this is what's coming. So listen, thank you guys for listening. I will see you probably on around Wednesday or so uh, once I get my, some of my work done around here and get this house cleaned up a little bit for spring. Uh, toodly-doo. <laughs>